Get longer testimonies, access to transcripts and exclusive content first. Join us on Patreon. Mr. Troyer, Your Honor, the United States calls Eugene Coleman. Could you spell your last name, please? Coleman, C-O-L-E-M-A-N. Mr. Coleman, I'd like you to move your chair up and make sure you're nice and close to the microphone and keep your voice up while I ask you some questions. Mr. Coleman, how old are you, sir? 43. Do you currently live in another state under another name, a name other than Eugene Coleman? Yes. Is that by virtue of having been in the U.S. Marshal Witness Security or otherwise known as Witness Protection Program? Yes. All right. Are you currently in that program now? No. Now, Mr. Coleman, did you enter a guilty plea to a drug charge back in 2004? Yes. Was that a drug charge involving a drug conspiracy here in federal court in Philadelphia? Yes. All right, now I'm going to show you government exhibit just for the witness only. Exhibit 176. In fact, if we could go to page 12 of exhibit 176. Do you recognize that document that was placed up there on the screen a moment ago? Yes. On page 12 of that document dated February 9th, 2004, is that your signature? Yes. Is that your plea agreement that you signed in the 2004 case? Yes. Your Honor, we would move in Exhibit 176. It may be admitted. If we could go back to Paragraph 1, sir, of that specific, on page 1 of that specific document and blow that up. Thank you. What was it, Mr. Coleman, that you pled guilty to back in 2004? Conspiracy to manufacture and distribute more than 5 kilograms of cocaine? Okay, that conspiracy with who did you plead guilty to conspiring? Who did you conspire with? Kabani Savage and Bubby. Who is Bubby? Gerald Thomas. Alright, were there other people who you conspired with as well? Yes. All right, if we could look at paragraph one, the conspiracy to manufacture and distribute more than five kilograms of cocaine, the second statement on there where it says the information, this was an information that you pled guilty to. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so did you waive your right to be indicted by a grand jury and you pled guilty to an information instead? Yes. This information, it says, arises from the defendant's role in aiding and abetting the manufacture and distribution of cocaine by a local drug trafficking organization led by Kabani Savage and Gerald Thomas, in that the defendant recompressed approximately 100 kilograms of cocaine that were subsequently distributed in the Eastern District of Pennsylvania and elsewhere from in or about January 1999 through in or about April 2003. Is that what you pled guilty to? Yes. As a result of pleading guilty to that information, Mr. Coleman, do you know what maximum and minimum mandatory sentences you were facing back then? 20 to life. All right. If we could go to paragraph 6 of that guilty plea agreement of the same exhibit, that appears on page 7. If we could show then on paragraph 6, it says... The defendant understands and agrees and has had explained to him by counsel that the court may impose the following statutory maximum and mandatory minimum sentence for the offense to which he's pleading guilty. Life imprisonment with a 20-year mandatory minimum term of imprisonment, mandatory minimum 10 years up to lifetime of supervised release, $8 million fine, and a $100 special assessment. Forfeiture of assets also may be ordered. And then, of course, there's a provision after that tells you 
that if you violate supervised release, then you could go back to prison for up to another five years. Are those the maximum and minimum mandatory sentences that you understood back when you pled guilty in that case? Yes. Now, was this agreement that you entered into a cooperation guilty plea agreement? Yes. Essentially, what is your understanding as to what you had to do as a result of this guilty plea cooperation agreement? Give up the information that I have, provide information for the people that I was with. Okay, what kind of information? Dealing in drugs, the drug trafficking that we was doing. Okay, and as a result of providing information, did that also include testimony, potentially include testimony at trials and at hearings? Yes. All right. In fact, did you testify at a trial in 2005? Yes. All right. Was that after members of your family had been killed in an arson fire in 2004? Yes. As a result of your cooperation in your case, Mr. Coleman, did you in fact receive what is referred to as a 5K1 motion? Did the government file one in your case to allow the court in your case to give a lower sentence? Yes. All right. What sentence did the judge in your case impose on you, Mr. Coleman? 41 months. All right. 41 months of prison? Prison, yes. All right. Did the judge also impose a period of supervised release at the end of that prison sentence? Yes. What period of supervised release was imposed? 10 years. All right. Mr. Coleman, as we sit here today, are you still on supervised release? Yes. Mr. Coleman, where did you take that down now, if you'd like? Thank you. Where did you grow up, Mr. Coleman? Philadelphia. Okay. Specifically, where was the house that you grew up in with your parents? 6th Street, 3256 North 6th Street. What part of Philadelphia is that? North Philadelphia. Now, who did you live with in that house? My mother, my father, before he passed away. My mother, my sisters, my niece, my nephew, and my other nephew came afterwards. Okay, I'm going to ask you. I'm a little hard of hearing. Okay. And you know that about me. So I'm going to ask you to speak up, okay? Yes. All right, thank you. Now, when you grew up in that house, what was your mother's name? Marcella. Okay, and your father's name? Eugene. You mentioned that you had a brother. What is your brother's name? Vernon. Okay, how old is your brother? 43. He's my twin. Okay, are you identical twins? Yes. All right. You mentioned that you had a sister who grew up in your house too. Is that right? Yes. Who is your sister? Regina. Okay. You mentioned, I think, another person too who lived in your house who I think you may have referred to, it was my sister. All right, who is that person? Tamika. All right, how is Tamika related to you by blood? She's my mom's sister's daughter, but my aunt passed away and my mom took her in at a young, early age, and she was raised as our sister. Okay, Tamika's last name was what? Nash. All right, is Nash your mother's maiden name? Yes. Now, you mentioned some other people who later lived in your household as well. Who are those people who lived in your house? The kids, Khadija, Taj, my sister's son, and my other sister's daughter. Now, let's break that down for us, if you would. Khadija is whose daughter? Tamika Nash's daughter. And Taj was whose daughter? Regina's daughter. Okay, you mentioned who else? My nephew Sean was there and my son who was not even one yet at the time. Okay, now you mentioned Sean. Whose son is Sean's? Danielle is my brother's, my brother's baby's mother. Okay, so it was your twin brother's son? 
Yes. Was Sean Rodriguez? Yes. All right. At some point, well, on October 9th of 2004, was your baby son also living in the house? Yes. And your baby son was? Demir. All right. Now, Mr. Coleman, when you were growing up in your house on North 6th Street, you mentioned that your father had passed away. Approximately how old were you when your dad passed away? 18, 19 by that time. Now, when you were younger, Mr. Coleman, growing up in that house, did there come a time when you got involved in drugs? Yes. All right. How old were you approximately when you first started getting involved in drugs? About 13, 13, 14, 13. All right. How was it? In what way did you first become involved at the age of 13? Well, I was a lookout for 8th and Butler. Who was it who brought you in as a lookout at 8th and Butler? Manny. Okay, who is Manny? Manny is Cabani's cousin. Does that refer to someone you have come to know as Raymond Wilmore? Yes. Okay, if I might just briefly show you, I'm going to cover up the bottom there. I'm showing you what's marked as Government's Exhibit 295. Who is this a picture of? Manny. Your Honor, we've moved in Government Exhibit 295. No objection. It may be admitted. Through Manny, did you come to know somebody by the name of Cabani Savage? Yes. Okay. Do you see that person, Cabani Savage, in court today? Yes. Could you point him out for me, please? He's right there. Indicating, Your Honor, stipulate to the identification of Mr. Savage by the witness. The record will so reflect.